Hey, I'm back. I'm sorry for my hiatus between my last video and this one. I'd planned to make them back to back, but who knew the transition to college would have been so challenging. Anyways, as you can see, I'm in my dorm room. So this is my new location and I'm for the most part all settled in. Anyways, today I'm going to read you a couple of my essays that I wrote and submitted for my college application process. I thought it was a very influential and important part of my process to hear what other people wrote so I could kind of get an idea of what was an acceptable, acceptable kind of thing that I could submit and see what kind of styles I could use or kind of make my own. So today I'm going to start off by reading my Common App essay, followed up with three of my supplemental essays that I submitted. Uh, these are the essays that I sent variations of to a variety of colleges. So I'm going to read them and then I'm going to talk a couple tips about them so that you can see where I was coming from and some of the ideas that I want to point out. Anyways, without further ado, let's start off with my first essay, my Common App essay. Like a brood of duckling following their mother, the children arrived at the double doors that led into a room high ceilinged with bright white lights that reflected off the translucent boards with netted hoops to the glossy hard maple wood floor. In the center of the room lay rows of seats filled with a plethora of gold contraptions held by other students. Finding their row, the kids braced themselves to the uncomfortable floor. A kid, curious of the event, waited in tranquility as the older students put their mouths to their devices. Within moments, the room filled with sound. After a long while, the kid watched his reflection on the shiny floor. A person with a curved apparatus made their way to the front. With a deep breath, they slowly played two notes that immersed the silent room. And with that, the other instruments played. Sitting up, the kid's skin turned into mini sand dunes that tossed and turned to the vibrations of pure imagination. It was as though the music played at his resonant frequency, causing his body to oscillate like a branch in the breeze. Then there was silence. The kid sat shocked. Without a touch, he moved, and without a word, he felt. Under his breath, he whispered, I'll be that person one day. A few months passed and I got a saxophone. Unable to play pure imagination, I put the music down for one day. I progressed rapidly, playing music for everyone, watching their reactions, every moment a musical delight. I became the best in elementary school, the town, middle school. At this point, I began to compete in regional competitions. The first time, unconcerned, I did what I always do, play music. But within an hour in the band, the conductor said to me, why are you second alto when you should be the best? The next year, I was the best, and each year after, even with the stronger competitors, I played piece after piece, audition to audition. The work found me and practice became a routine of copying dots to sounds in the horn, like Bartleby, a Scrivener. In musical dismay, I continually reassured the goal, best in state. When states came, I played the piece flawlessly, but with the sight reading, an essential part, I froze for a millisecond, but my opportunity was lost. I missed the cutoff by one point. My mind punished me. To abscond from my new normal, I took a group of students to my elementary school to reform. I gave a presentation and ended with a song. Invigorated, I went to two more schools, and when playing, playing for another, my chest tightened. I, it was competition time to restore my honor. Away went the music replaced by work, and in days I learned the piece but heard only noise. Inspired by my previous engagements, without changing the writing, I began to play the unwritten, to make music. I waited in enthusiasm to share my art, and when the time came, I did. Results arrived a couple days later. However, I received the lowest score I'd ever had any audition. The judge commented, you should learn how to play the saxophone. Watch real classical musicians. I waited for panic, but nothing happened. Why? My mind searched for an answer. I thought about the reasons for my passions and the times between the auditions. Memories raced through my mind. Veterans, parents, senior citizens, children, holidays. I made the judge feel something, I whispered. Suddenly it all stopped at a recent event. A kid was sitting on a hard maple wood floor, swaying like a charmed snake as goosebumps shivered on his skin. In trance, he stared at me, playing pure imagination that day. Under the kid's breath, he said, I'll be that guy one day. I sat and smiled. All right, so that's my first essay, my common app essay. 
the first thing I want to point out was that I talked about my music, something that I was super passionate about. This is a thing I've talked about in a lot of my other videos. You really want to convey that passion throughout your college application process. So I decided to talk about something that I really enjoyed, but I didn't want to repeat myself by you know saying the same things that were already in my extracurricular section. So I told a story that was not seen or shown in any of the other sections to describe something that I really enjoy. The second thing I wanted to point out was that although this is about music, I was actually talking about something a little bit deeper than that. I was talking about the character traits that I have and also me as a person and the character progression I make from the beginning to the end. I think since the Common App essay is the most important essay and the biggest one that you're going to submit to the most amount of schools, it's important to try and show some kind of character progression or tell a story that talks about the things that make you the person who you are today. This really gives the college a good idea of how the things that you do and the people you're around influence who you are as a person and make you a good fit for their school. So try and really consider when you're writing your essay to make something that will show the progression from being to the end or show the things that make you who you are. The third thing I want to point out was the structure of this. This is not as important as the first two things that I said, but I definitely want to mention it because I thought it was pretty cool when I wrote it. Now. I start off by telling a story, so it's a hook, so it gets the people, the readers, really interested into what I'm re writing about. So I made this hook in a very specific way. I made it in the third person. Now I was listening to a Yale podcast about maybe a year and a half ago, and it was during the COVID pandemic where they had a couple people, the admissions officers, do a podcast to kind of talk about the things that they really didn't like in essays and the things they really did like and to look out for it so you could write a good essay. And one of the things I really hated was the trope of going from third person and then following it up by saying, and that person was me. And so notice I never say that in my entire essay. The reason for this is because the beginning, although in the third person, is not necessarily about me. The essay is about a bunch of things, and it's directly referenced at the end when I talk about the kid who's watching me playing the same thing that the, another person had done for me. And so I want to make this parallel so that when people get to the end of the essay, they don't have to re -re like read the whole thing again. They kind of can just bring their mind back to the beginning. So this is a cool way that I got around the word count because I was able to just reference it and people can immediately vividly remember the things that I talked about at the beginning. I also thought this was really great because the beginning is sort of an allegory for what I want to do with the things that I'm interested in. So I wanted to show that when I'm passionate about something, I want to be able to inspire people. I want to be able to do something with the things that I, I know. And so the beginning part is really an allegory for the things that I want to be able to accomplish with my music and all the things I'm passionate about. So those are some of the things that you can consider when you're writing your essay. All right, let's move to the second one. All right, so this is the first supplemental essay, and this one is, the prompt is, we know you lead a busy life full of activities, many of which are required of you. Tell us about something that you do for the pleasure of it. 250 words. As my father and I push open the glass doors, immediately we're struck with the familiar icy wind of those New England winter nights that I long for on hot summer days. In the air, the standard radio pop songs immerse the bright, high-ceilinged room with an upbeat environment to accompany the grunts and groans of humans and machines. Totally locked in at the task at hand, I was in pure excitement, my curiosity overflowing. What should we try today? We scan our cards and enter the wonderland of endless possibilities. Today was leg day, no matter how much it hurts. So we head to the squat racks. After adjusting the J-hooks and doing a few warm-up reps, we add the weights, a PR. I looked at the bar in contemplation and then stared at the reflective surface behind it. It was there my biggest competitor stood. I approached him and grinned as he grinned back, as if to tell me he was undefeated. Defiantly racking the bar into my lats, I took a few steps backward and filled my stomach with oxygen, forcing back my hips and bending my knees till my body could go no lower. Then I pushed off the floor as if trying to lift off like Superman. Wobbling ferociously, I willed my body to resist gravity pushing through the atmosphere. Eventually, I reached the top and racked the bar, staring at my new opponent. Smiling, I said, next time, we'll add five more pounds. So once again, this essay is about something I'm passionate about, which is a common theme throughout all of my essays and something that I do as an extracurricular. The thing that's a little bit different about this one is that this is something that I didn't even put on my extracurricular area of the application. So this is something that's completely new for the readers. They've never heard this or never seen this side of me. So this is something new that they can kind of explore through this essay. 
I also made this essay more about the character traits in me. So I wanted to develop an idea that I am perseverant and I'm able to push myself to limit. And my biggest competitor is myself. And I'm always trying to make myself better by competing with myself. And I also want to develop the idea that I can have fun through activities that are outside of my normal extracurriculars and my normal academics. So this does all those things in one essay without outright saying that I love going to the gym and it's something I do for fun, as well as it shows that I'm strong, perseverant, and willing to work hard and prove myself wrong every time and that I'm curious about many things. No, I, I kind of developed that through this story. So that's another thing you can consider, developing character traits through a story about something that's not necessarily about your character. All right, moving on to my next supplemental. This next one is describe one way in which you've contributed to your community, whether in your family, the classroom, your neighborhood, etc. 250 words. 345, I was right on time. I slid over my head the white garment that lay in the closet filled with identical pieces of clothing organized by size. I touched my curly hair to check its condition and proceed to button the collar. Putting the hanger in the back of the closet where all the largest sizes were, I could see two empty hangers at the front that reminded me of those days when I used to wear the smallest ones. I grabbed the green rope and tied it around my waist, then headed through the dark corridor only illuminated by the beams of light shining through the T-shaped cutouts on the wall to the left. Eventually, I entered the light of the room. Inside were two young children wearing the same outfit as I. We did our tasks. When the sound of a bell went off, I had grabbed my golden staff and motioned for them to follow me to the front of the building. When the music began to play, my brain locked into the routine. The mass had begun. I served the altar while carefully listening to the priest, trying to grasp as much knowledge as I could. Each step, I looked towards the kids and did head gestures as gentle reminders to avoid the mistakes I made before. I nodded in satisfaction every time they did it right. As we did our final walk through our community, the children followed in my footsteps. All right, so this third essay is about altar serving. It's uh, in response to something that you do for your community. So obviously on the surface, this is just an essay about the community, but on the deeper level, it's an essay about legacy and sharing the things that you know with others. And so I want to convey the things that I'm interested in, things that I've been doing for a long time, because at this point, I've been doing altar serving for a very long time. It's also teaching people how to do it and understand what they're doing. And so I want to demonstrate that it, there's no point to just knowing things and never sharing them because then you only keep them to yourself and it doesn't have any betterment to even yourself or the people around you. So when you know a lot of things, it's good to share it with other people so you can build a legacy, but also have an influence on the future. So this essay has a, is talking about a character trait of mine that I like to try and share the things that I'm passionate about. All right, last essay. The house was silent. Aside from the light clickety clacks of the keyboards mining away at work and the low hmm, hmm, of the AC, any other sound would intrude on the enervating environment. Every person, their isolated ecosystem of devices and endless toils. My head slowly began to pulsate due to the bright screen I had been focusing on the whole day. Pushing through, I continued to erode the dense rock of schoolwork. Staring at my last bit of homework, I began to lightly tap my foot to the tick tock beat of the second hand on the clock, waiting for that ding dong, cutting through the deep concentration like a hot knife through plastic. It was that glorious sound that signified the end of the work week with my father's arrival from work. I raced down the stairs, running through each room, scavenging for the perfect snack like a vulture in the sky. I could hear the squeak squeak of the old wooden stairs and each step with the thud thud of feet heading to the family room. Mindlessly, I found my way to the kitchen where I could hear the dang dang of my grandmother's spoon hitting the pot over the hot fire. She threw dashes of salt, pepper, and curry into a pot, aromatizing the room with classic Jamaican scents contrasting with the fragrance of Filipino chicken adobo in the pan next to it. Scanning the room, I went from table to counter, inside the fridge, outside the fridge, searching for something healthy to fit into my calories in, calories out routine. Eventually, I found the perfect low calorie snack. I tossed the popcorn into the microwave, listening to the pop pops as I waited. With all the treats in my hand, I sprinted to the other room and flopped onto the pillowy surface between two people dividing the two sides of the debate on human nature, character development, and choices. A family of introverts trying to analyze the characters on the screen to enlighten us about the characters in life. We eat and talk about our connection to the characters and theorize what we would do in each situation from interdimensional travel to solving cases in the hospital or with the FBI. 
With the crunch crunch of the snacks in the background, I rant on and on about the technological advancements of fiction and the fantastical elements that I theorized could one day become true. From House MD to Avatar Last Airbender, we argue about the lessons we learn, the fate of living a false life, not fitting in, trying to do the impossible and failing, taking things to the extreme, addiction, responsibility, friendship. I think and listen, forming my own opinions and ideas, trying to piece together the meaning of life. As the sun begins to hide behind the distant mountains and trees, so do our conversations. My instruments sat in their cases, my plans for the gym had been forgotten, and my homework waited alone in my room. But it was all well worth it. I grabbed the remote and pressed play. Click. The house was silent. Aside from the chit-chat of voices and the zing-zing of orchestral sounds from the TV, anything else would intrude on my favorite time of the week. I tightly bundle my body with my parents, hoping it would never end. All right, so that's the last essay I'm gonna read for you today. This essay is something about that I really like to do. I love watching TV, it's a big part of me. And so I wanted to convey the something that was really outside of the normal and show that I have intellectual curiosity and interest in things that may seem unacademic and shows that I can have fun other than you know just doing math problems all day. This essay also tells a lot about me. I try to influ influence it with uh, my culture and also talk about the things that I like to do and would give up for my favorite time of the week. I want to show that my family is important to me and that spending a little bit of time with my family every week is something that we always try to do and I will, I will always value. And so it's all these character traits and a lot of other things I sprinkled in there to describe things about me and the things that I like and to really give the colleges a good idea of who they're going to be accepting. So I, I like this essay, but I don't know if it helped me or not get me into the colleges, but it's something that I thought was interesting because it's completely unrelated to anything else that I would have written about or wrote about in any other way, in any of the other parts of the application. All right, so that's the last essay I have for you guys today. If you'd like to look at a more detailed structure of how I broke down and wrote my essays, you can go check out the last video I made. I'll link in the description and in the cards above. Uh, I'll also just be open to comments in the comment section about questions on how I wrote my essays and what you might be thinking. I'll try and answer them as quick as possible, but of course I have classes. But other than that, I hope this was helpful to people and thank you for watching.